Ladies and gentlemen and race fans out there, this is another edition, special edition as we like to call them, of the Joe Six Pack Podcast. We are broadcasting live on Twitch, and you can catch us later on if you're not watching live. We download it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcast, YouTube, and last time I checked, about two dozen other ones. So the Joe Six Pack Podcast, you can pick it up easily on anchor we can watch it or listen to it forever twitch is free and the reason it's free is they only hold on to the broadcast for about two weeks so they don't have to charge you for all that space joe six pack podcast is brought to you by ptm racing tv one of two broadcasting companies that broadcast the joe six pack racing league they do our sunday league and thursday nights we do the Formula V League, which is in its infancy. No broadcasting there yet. Tuesday night is the pick em up Truck Series, which is on Turn 3 Network. And we're really happy with both those broadcasters. So tonight's special guest is Joe Gatina. Did I get your name right? Yeah, that's uh, Joey Gatina. Yep. Joey, oh, Gatina. Okay. And you are owner of Sim 500 Esports Racing League. And what really caught my eye when I reached out to you or you got in touch with me is you have seven leagues on iRacing that are all broadcasted. We do. And um, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. We just uh, have been very fortunate. We kind of run Sim 500 like a business, as I'm sure you run your, your league. Yeah. But, um, yep. Just the great partnerships and sponsors. We recently just signed uh, the 811 call before you dig uh, North Carolina branch to our league on Monday night. So we've oh, got the cool. Virginia 811 group coming on board. Hopefully the Alabama group. Um, Trans Service Logistics have been with us for I don't know how many years, but uh, they've been a great supporter. Uh, Ford Entertainment Group. Jeff Ford's been great to us. Um, so, yes, yeah, because of those guys, uh, Shrew Diecast is why we're able to do what we're doing. Really, and how long have the has um the, how long have the leagues been on iRacing? Well, Sim Five Hundred goes back to the NASCAR three days. Wow. Um, I I actually I was racing in another league, um, RSR, with a uh, league owner Keith Brooks back in the day. Um, very very new to sim racing, but of course I had a real racing background at the time. I was running late model dirt cars and stuff like that, but just fell in love with sim racing. You know, I could stay home and I didn't have to go in a, a sweaty, sh you know, a, a shop and get all yeah. nasty, hot and sweaty. I could, <laughs> right. you know, do this from the luxury of the, the house. It was yeah. great. Um, but uh, I started working with a guy that owned sim 500 and, and then actually Brian Keselowski, the brother of Brad, um, Brian and I worked together to put a series together called midnight thunder on Friday. And the reason why I did that was because my wife was giving me so much, you know, mess uh, <laughs> about as much time as I was spending on the computer. So Midnight Thunder was created, and that gave me time to go out with a family, go to dinner, do whatever yep. I want to do. And then I got to get home for some quiet time. Well, Midnight Thunder is still going today. Wow. Probably 15 or so years it's been active. Um, so basically if you go back and look at the history books of sim 500 it was some of the bigger names your alfalas and uh, a lot of your pro drivers which i don't have a roster in front of me but it was that was the birthplace of i would say the super series um they had a vision <clears throat> they created something back in those days it was all broadcast on arlen tv and wow. uh, they were the pioneers um i owned uh rsr which is currently active uh on i racing and just through some situations it was no longer my league uh, i decided to walk away and start sim 500 back up cool. and we're starting our sixth season so um and it's a lot of the same guys believe it or not that we raced with 15 years ago oh that's amazing now you said that you started one of those with brad kozlowski's brother i did brad and i we uh oh, we got so together cool. started friday night and then we also did a Saturday series, and that's when Brian was running the Arca series and won in a bunch of races. Um, it was nocturnal adrenaline, and it ran the Arca series. We only did that for a short time, and yeah. then, um, but yeah, we that's kind of where it all started for me as far as the you know, learning to become a league admin, kind of getting the respect to be a league admin. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I didn't stay around 
very long with Sim 500. Um, the product that I put together um, was better in the hands at the time with someone else. Um, and it. they took it and just did a fabulous job. We used to have a radio broadcast on it Friday nights. No um, a Midnight Thunder was great. You can go to the front of the website and listen to the radio play by play like MRN. Oh, that is um, so Versus cool. going and watching a video. So yep. um, it was, you know, nothing for 60 to 80 drivers trying to show up to make that race on Friday nights. That is incredible. Now, you mentioned a whole bunch of sponsors. Uh, we get. Our league, we're kind of the we're like the Sunday afternoon softball beer league. So if we were, if we were official races on i racing, we'd be pretty close to bottom splits. But we're happy with that. It's just a bunch of guys like to get together and race, and have a good time. And occasionally we'll get a sponsor to come on. And um, Plan B Sales is with us. Uh, they give us a code JSP at checkout, and you get free shipping on diecast which can save you 12 to 20 15 bucks depending on where you live um other than that sponsorships on iRacing are pretty tough to come by so how did you find 811 dig in north carolina when you're down there on the gulf coast well i think it's uh where we're having our success um is members coming into the league and they just like the way it's ran um we don't do rules um, when I started Sim 500 back up, you know, we had a book of rules and we were yep. watching guys going through pit stalls and all this stuff. And I had a good friend of mine who ran Dell Jr.'s league back in the day, uh, DMP. And uh, I, I would talk to him a little bit about, you know, some of the issues we were having, just get a little advice from him. And he said, you know, when we took our rules away, we had the, bo- the best racing we ever had. And nobody thought that would work, and it, sure. and it has. It, I mean, we've had our growing pains. We'll still have our bad races, but we don't oh, have sure. any rules. We start on the green flag, and other than that, we just ask you to uh, stay to the right going down pit road uh, under caution, and um, really that's it. And just respect your fellow driver. So, oh, that's great. Um, it's just ran a little different than, I guess, most leagues out there. And so with that being said, these guys and some of our members, they come in, they like what they see, and – and and these sponsors have been offered up just in those in, in that fashion. I mean, we we literally have not gone out and um, searched for any sponsors. I, I don't have time, unfortunately. I right. wish I did uh, for our drivers for everything they do for us. I think we've had 970 drivers uh, start a league race at Sim 500, and we've got some guys that are uh, Chad Coleman and has got 892 starts. EJ O'Rourke's got 841. Wow. I mean, it's insane, uh, what we have in the group we have. And, uh, and like I said, they just come in, they see it, they like it. And they're like, man, this, this would be great here. Um, so we, we went through multiple rounds of zoom calls, zoom meetings, and, and got along great with the people at eight one one. And And this is again, our first stint with them. Uh, Monday nights with the tra- well, I was going to say Trans Service Cup. They yeah. they're uh, taking over the sponsorship from the Trans Service uh, Logistics, who's been ca- covering Mondays for the last few years now. But uh, Sirius is moving to LSR TV. Um, Cody and the guys over there, Wesley, uh, John Mush, and all those guys. I mean, they they're doing everything they can to accommodate us. Social media is becoming a bigger thing <clears throat> for us, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I say, you know, it's, it's fun to run the leagues in a lot of ways, but you know, it, it gets serious at times, as you know, I mean, cause there is a ton of work that goes into it. <laughs> yeah, there is. Like I was mentioning, um, before we went on, I'm a garden designer by trade. So I'm lucky I get the winters off and with the three leagues that we do here, I mean, we're on, we're on Facebook. We have our own Facebook page. We've got the discord. We've got the, uh, the Joe six pack podcast. We're on Twitter. Uh, we're on Reddit. I was on TikTok for a while with it, and we've got the most views uh, of anything on TikTok of the videos and stuff we put up. But they were not racing people; they were just a bunch of you know what TikTok's like. It's it's like the wild west of weird people. Yeah, for <laughs> so, sure. So, um, so what do you do on your social media? What's your what's your weekly thing for like your Monday race? How do you promote your races on social media? Well, I'm I'm still not, I'm not very good at that because I do a lot of the stuff, the promoting and I guess uh, the social media posting. But, you know, my thing, we, we've got a lot of our broadcast groups are through YouTube. Um, so I use Facebook more than anything. Yep. Um, I don't use Twitter a bunch. I probably should. 
Um, but we use our broadcast networks and then we've got, you know, somewhere close to 2000 people that follow, uh, SIM 500. So that's, that's something that we're working on right now. So I can tell our guys, you can thank us all day long in the broadcast and, um, everything else. Uh, but you know, to show thanks, a, a good like and a share, that's something I never thought we'd be worried about it in sim racing, but liking and sharing these posts is become extremely important because that's what these partners are looking for. They're looking, uh, for uh, an active uh, page, and, and exactly. they do. They look at Facebook, anything yep. that, that you have your name on, and um, that's what they want to see. Wow. So so you actually had Zoom meetings with 811, and what, what type of, if you could disclose it, what type of package did they come up with for you? Um, well, we, we were originally working on the Wednesday Truck Series, um, but we just decided with what they were bringing um, and where we really want to take the league, um, it, and that, that's the aspect of it. Cause they also have, um, um, a podcast as well. The Brian Morehouse puts on, uh, safe digging sports. You can find that on no Facebook. Um, and I'm sure Twitter and everything else, but Brian, Brian puts that on for us. Um, and, um, just like I said, the, the whole social media aspect that they bring, uh, that they brought awareness to us kind of through these meetings, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. That, that's where we felt like our money series needed to go because with Trans Service Logistics, um, you know, they they have been a partner of ours, I said a hundred times, for a long time through our great friend, uh, Glenn Campbell. And, um, you know, for them, they're a logistics company. They don't really have a, a whole lot to get out. Uh, their initial uh, thoughts were, hey, we can get in here. Let's talk about jobs. Yeah. We need truck drivers yeah. and things of that nature. Yeah. Um well, now with 811, the message is different. They want to reach as many people as they can about the 811 initiative, uh, call before you dig. So, again, the social media stuff, that's where I said, you know, if we can make the switch, and I went to Trans Service and Glenn and asked and if they would, you know, be okay with us doing that. Because this, this happened, literally made the switch a few weeks ago. No kidding. Um, yeah. And Glenn uh, and the Trans Service folks said, whatever's best for SIM 500, we support so they're a trucking company. Again, they'll be over the uh, Wednesday uh, truck series. It starts in March. Um, so we have three premier series. We, we like to call them Mondays, our cup. Wednesdays, mm-hmm. our trucks, which again starts in March. And then Sunday <clears throat> is our FEG Xfinity series. And we'll start that series the week after Daytona. And uh, Jeff, is, uh, Jeff Ford at FEG Ford Entertainment Group has put up a direct drive um fan attack uh steering wheel oh, cool. uh, for the driver who completes the most laps so you don't have to be the fastest guy you don't have to win races yep you just have to show up and just have to complete laps to win an awesome prize now that if is there really is a cool. tie obviously we'd go back to wins and top fives yeah. and top tens or whatever we needed to break that tie but um everything else um again our premiere monday Wednesday, Sunday, those all three, we do a package on entry. So it's a hundred dollars to race in all three series. Okay. Um, Monday, LSR TV, Wednesday, we're with ghost fire media. And then Sunday, we're the, we're with the, uh, captain, um, esports network. Um, and then Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays are all free. Um, we have free series, uh, a super late model series that runs on bigger tracks on Tuesdays um vrn is covering that uh thursdays the nascar dirt series that's something new for us but we're getting almost 30 cars every race with that oh that's great so uh we're excited to keep that going with the uh, with our partners over there uh john fowler's done a great job with his league and it's kind of a partnership and a merger we put together and then saturday we, we're trying our best but uh <clears throat> um i let me forget friday midnight thunder is also <laughs> free it's broadcasted by extreme tv um and then saturday is also broadcasted by extreme what we're trying on saturdays is to get that 87 car up and going but it's a uh, real tough car to yeah. to get guys attracted to for some reason but uh those both friday and saturday both start at uh at uh, 10 eastern practice so Got they it. give you time to go out and spend time with the family and come yep. back and do some racing now you mentioned that it was uh kind of interesting you said that you're having a hard time getting guys interested in the 87s we're finding just the opposite because we're we're going to go with what we call a premier league and right now um our main league is sunday afternoons it's our 
next gen uh, cup series, but we upped our I rating limit a little bit for this season. This is we're in season four right now, and with the because what we wanted to do was we have some drivers that are getting really really good, and other drivers that are just you know just out for a Sunday drive and just want to hang out and have a couple beers while they race and have a good time. So we increased our uh, maximum I rating from 2,000 up to 2,500 with to get people in and then promote the Premier League, which is going to be a higher I rating to even get in the league. And we were asking what cars they wanted to drive. We were throwing around like um, Xfinities, the Gen 6, or the 87s, and the 87s came out on top as the number one choice. So I think that's what we're going to be going with. We'll find out tomorrow night when we have our first... Uh, test run tomorrow night we're doing 100 laps at homestead miami at 8 30 under hosted on iRacing, and that's what surprised me uh, why don't people seem to be interested in 87s too hard to drive or nobody knows what it is yeah i think uh, you know i think where the car was a year ago um it was and is fairly difficult to drive yep and um you know, it, it works good at certain racetracks. I mean, we had, uh, I don't know how many cars we had Saturday night at North Wilkesboro, but you can only imagine. Um, that's a very difficult track. Well, they had 23 cars show up for North Wilkesboro. So, okay. I mean, at the end of the day, that's a win for us yeah. uh, at a track like that because, you know, we've got enough data to know what people are looking for, and, and North gotcha. Wilkesboro and the 87 is not it. No uh, basically, in my league, uh, or okay. in our league, um, but uh, we were happy with that. But, you know, it was just it was a caution filled race. Short track racing is very tough. Yes. Uh, it's great on paper. But in reality, to the sim world, um, you know, you really need that special group of drivers that yeah. uh, really understand and, and have the patience that it takes to drive those tracks. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, drivers that real have, have a real racing background, they get it. They understand it a little better. It's easier. Right. Um, we ran five flags in the super late models on Tuesday and it was the same thing. So, yeah, uh, we struggle a little bit with short tracks. We hate road courses. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I wish the 87 was a little different. I wish it yeah. drove like a truck or something like that because, mm-hmm. um, it is probably the sexiest race car on the service. Um, yep. and I would, I would love to, to race that car all day long. Unfortunately, Saturdays don't work for me, but, um, but our guys, you know, we're working hard to try to find that group that uh, wants to come out and, you know, keep those cars prevalent. But the ARCA yeah, car okay. may follow it. Um, we had good success with it. We were getting 30 some odd drivers on Saturday oh, with it. Uh, it wasn't broadcasted and just kind of showing up and guys were having fun. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll jump in an official race on ARCA. And <laughs> it reminds me of being like 17 years old and driving your grandfather's 1975 Buick Riviera or some gigantic, you know, grandfather boat car. <laughs> it's it's totally different beast to drive, but it is so much fun. I love driving the Arca cars. Yeah, and I, the Arca car was a lot of fun. I don't know if they changed the package up on it, but you can't really bump on those cars on a super speedway. No, so not at all. Parker Kligerman actually triggered probably one of the biggest wrecks. Um you could probably find that on YouTube, but Parker was in a, I was actually traveling to Orlando with the family and, uh-huh. um, we had almost, I think we had a full field and, uh, they hadn't made many laps. I'm driving on the road and watching the race. And, uh, I don't know what Parker did, but he triggered a mass. I mean, it was the biggest wreck I've ever seen. I think everybody was involved in it. <laughs> and it was so, it was so big. It made it on NASCAR.com. Oh, really? Um, I actually, it made it on NASCAR.com that <laughs> Parker destroyed the entire field in a sim race. Oh, man. it's it, I tell yeah. you, it, it is such a small world. You mentioned Parker uh, Kligerman there. Um, I volunteer with um, what's called a, a group called the Right Handers over at Lime Rock Park, which is just about an hour from me, and Parker Kligerman is one of the 20-some-odd new owners of the park over there after Skip Barber... Um, stepped aside a little bit and brought in some management team to take over. So we haven't seen him there at the track yet. Um, but it, Lime Rock has been saved. Um, get a chance to go over and work three major events over there. Uh, basically, we make sure the drivers get to the winner's circle and run the media room and 
driving people around and basically just taking care of a lot of the the customer service stuff and it and it's a blast and skip barber's been trying to bring in new ownership over there for many years and he gets real close to signing a deal and all of a sudden they start talking golf courses and condos and he shuts them uh. right down so he's got uh, some real car guys in there now. Roger Penske is on the board. Parker Kligerman's um, part owner. Um, a lot of uh, Porsche dealers, Porsche parts guys are, are involved. They've got Porsche themselves involved. So it's, it's guaranteed to stay as a, a really premier road track for quite a while. And yeah, I'm, I love racing road tracks, but when we do it... On Joe's Six Pack Racing, we do, coming up this weekend, is Watkins Glen. And I love the road tracks. We go to Watkins Glen camping every summer and get the hot passes for NASCAR and everything. But if there's 24 cars that are starting in our league, and I'm one of them, I will finish 32nd every time. It's just <laughs> it's just really, really hard to drive road, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm the same way. And, yeah. and really, that just comes down to... You know, having the time to to put in the laps, and and I really yeah. don't race much. Um, uh-huh. I I'll race in the league. Um, I generally I still don't race much. I race Monday through Thursday on most cases. I've been taking Wednesdays off. Yeah. But um, and then you know I travel down to the beach on the weekends. But um, ah, okay. I uh, I don't do any official racing. I tried to get into dirt. You know, I yeah. got my C license. It was a great challenge to get there. I think anybody out there that. Do not if you don't have your C license in dirt. I think it's something that you need to get. It's different, obviously, than asphalt, but it's oh, yeah. it really teaches you some things that would really, I think, make your asphalt racing um, a lot better. Um, I had a blast. Um, the challenge to get there, and I did it in like a day and a half. Oh wow! But that's um, quick. yeah, yeah, I put a lot of effort in, a lot of racing, and just stayed. Yeah. The, the whole thing about your I rating. Um, and your SR really is just being a safe driver. Pretty much. Um, yeah, being smart right. about what you're doing. And, yeah. you know, finishes are important, but you also have to finish the race. And that's yeah. in my real racing career when I first started out, that was the main thing. Hey, if you put it on the truck at the end of the night, we had a successful day. We keep doing exactly. that. The finishes will keep coming. So <laughs> yeah. throughout my career, I drove for people and, you know, you know, sometimes I didn't push it as hard as I needed to, but the, at the end of the day, they didn't have to pay a bill to fix a race car. Oh, they're they're not cheap, especially if you don't if your team doesn't have a lot of money. I mean, it, the money that these teams put out is just, in, on the top series is just incredible. Um, tell me a little bit about your real life racing. You said you had a bunch of uh, ARCA starts. Tell me about your history with ARCA. Well, I wouldn't say a bunch. I've got a few. Okay. Um, you know, I was I spent most of my time, you know, as a blue collar uh, dreamer, basically. Yep. <laughs> uh, my granddad was in the sport a long time ago, and um, basically, I do it on my own. I didn't have uh, any family back at me or anything like mm-hmm. that. So, um, had some friends along the way put up some money. My cousin helped me out a little bit, but um, we found ourselves with a dirt late model, and, and and I'll tell you, it was embarrassing. We went out to a local Alabama dirt track here, and. We, um, I didn't have a clue what a, how to drive a Burt transmission. So <laughs> I jumped in the car at the track and we fired it up and I'm yelling at my crew chief. It won't, the, it won't go in gear. The guy next to us is watching us. We raised the, the car up. And I'm sure people <laughs> out there are laughing already, but we're bleeding the, the clutch thinking that's the problem. Well, <laughs> this guy comes over and shuts the car off. He says, drop the car. You have no idea what y'all are doing, do you? And we're like, well, honestly, no. <laughs> He's like, oh, all right. Man. He's like, push the clutch in and shove it into gear. And and so I did that, and the car took off. And he's like, <laughs> you have to keep the clutch matched in, mashed in for the car to go. Then when you get on the racetrack, you lift off the clutch and you slam it back in race gear. I had no clue. So we started there. Um, That's great. And made, made it all the way to Daytona um, in the Arca series. No kidding. Um, we had a, a good car down there a few years ago. And I say a few. is actually six years ago. Um, that we actually went down there and uh, had a good car, had a nil more in it. Um, but just unfortunate circumstances, uh, the way ARCA, you know, kind of handled some of the qualifying and the groups. Yeah. Uh, we made a gear change of the last practice. Um, we didn't get the speed we needed out of the car. Uh, the last practice is only an hour. So that's kind of how they lined us up. Uh, um, okay. was based on that. So 
in Arca, you have the Ilmore and you have legacy engines, which those at the time, you know, could not even keep up. So it was uh, myself. I can't remember the kid's name that was in front of us, but we both had Ilmore's and we walked away from the other three cars in our group of five. And I missed the race based on, uh, I mean, just, just by a hair, uh, but everybody else had five cars and the Ilmore. So they were able to get out there and stretch their legs. We were pretty good in practice. I mean, we led some draft. Um, I had a long uh, line of cars on the bottom of the track. Um, you know, we, we ran hard with some of the Cunningham cars and, we had Earl Barbin up on the tower, uh, Jimmy Johnson's spotter. Um, so we had everything we needed. We just we went down there. As, uh, it was kind of like a, a days of thunder uh, kind of thing. This gentleman, you know, gets some money, wants to build a race team. I find a car. We, we buy it, and we're putting it together in a bar. Matter of fact, at Ryan Newman's seat, we had certified by a butler uh, on an emergency situation so we could get it in the car and go. <laughs> and uh, we, we actually had uh, the championship. Uh, provisional uh, that Grant Enfinger uh, won the year before, but for some reason uh, my corner was talked out of it, and I'm not one to back down from a challenge. Um, so we said, let's go down there and earn it, and I had no problem doing that. I knew yeah. there was a chance we could miss the race, but uh, at the end of the day, my goals uh, as a kid, um, I love Daytona. Yeah, uh, I've never been, um, but I wouldn't go to Daytona until I walked through the gate as a driver. So. No to kidding. accomplish that at 36 years old, no matter the circumstances, it was a, a very successful trip. It was, you know, me and my now wife went down together, didn't have any family with us. Yeah. Um, I wish there would have been some family and down to enjoy some of that. But, uh, sure. you know, the racing's been my thing, and I've never done it for anybody else other than myself. But, um, you know, when you get down to it, you know, um, most people get into something like that, especially when you're risking your life uh to make money and today's yeah. sport i don't know how many of those guys make money um i'm not going to mention any names but i talked to a, an actual truck series winner and he told me he made more money he had won a bunch of truck races but he's won one race he said man i made more money working as a used car salesman than i do running the truck series so, i mean oh, man. it's just tough you know the yeah. pay to play bill um yep. we had a chance to go run daytona and talladega this year um in the arca series and you know it was a hundred thousand dollars i mean it doesn't oh my gosh that's it it's just money buddy i mean if you yeah. want to be a race car driver today it's just money so yeah. um that kind of for me um when i got to north carolina and got around some of these people and understood you know how the sport had transitioned um and they wanted my money and i wanted theirs and they were clearly not going to give me any there so <laughs> it was yeah. time to let that thing go wow. um I didn't care about walking around in a driving suit, taking pictures and trying to look cool. Yeah. I wanted fat pockets and, uh, you know, uh, and, and master a craft and have a challenge. But again, it's just different. The sport mm -hmm. is, it's, like you said, it's expensive to race. And unfortunately the drivers, the ones that are having to pay the toll these days to be in the car. Yeah. Now the deal is you, yeah, we'll, we'll hire you, but you've got to bring some money with you. So you got to click, have your, almost like have your own sponsor and your own media company or whatever you want to call it there, your license or whatever it is. Um, agents getting new sponsors before you can even drive for somebody now, it seems. Yeah. And I mean, most of it is it's, it's relationships, it's family, it's yeah. who you know. Um, because I can tell you there's a lot of groups out there that, that obviously reached out and said, Hey man, you hire us, we'll get you sponsors. And you know, that, that stuff just, if it was that easy, <laughs> um, you know, they're, it's just not that easy. You, it yeah. Literally, it's just you've got to have people in your corner. Um, and I don't even know what the payoff is at the end of the day. I mean, other than you get, you know, have fun getting to see your name on a car. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just tough, the sport. But, you know, the thing is, we're all race fans. And mm -hmm. um, no matter what uh, NASCAR does, um, you know, I think we're all going to continue to watch. You hear some that oh, yeah. say it's dead and. They're not going to watch it. Well, if you're a true race fan, you you're, know, you're, you're going to watch. You're going to be there. You're going to tune yeah. in. It, it may not uh, be what you like, but it's still racing. Yeah. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. with the way the sport's changed, the personalities have changed. Um, I know that's been difficult for fans, I think, to kind of, um, you know, um, get, you know, have, have that guy to get behind, like the old days when you had just about everybody in the field was a personality from rusty to Dale to Daryl. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just a whole different world and that's what built the sport. Those guys and mm -hmm. those personalities, we don't have that anymore. And I think that's a good part of why the seats are empty. And also too, I don't, I don't know that a blue collar guy has anything in common with a, 
a 16 or 18 year old kid who had never worked a day in his life. I mean, <laughs> what kind true. of fan base is he really bringing to the racetrack? You know what I yeah. mean? Other than dad's money and dad's friends. Right. And it, back then there were personalities. Now they're celebrities. Yeah, some are, I mean, yeah. they are. Um, and, and I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, cause you know, you gotta, you gotta have those people for sure to keep the sport going. And I think Harvick and a bunch of guys are doing a good job holding the stick right now. And, yeah. um, you know, it's great to see Larson back. And Larson's brought a lot of fans back, uh, and, and, and then dirt mm-hmm. fans to NASCAR. So, but you know, as far as racing is concerned, I, I love all forms. F one, um, I watch everything racing. I love watching dirt. So, um, you know, I was telling a guy today. Matter of fact, we were, I was I was at work and I were out at a steel mill, and I haven't seen the guy in a while. He runs four ten. Used to run four ten sprint cars, mm-hmm. and they had a wreck and messed his back up. And I didn't even know they ran four ten sprint cars in Alabama. I was floored by that. <laughs> uh, we don't even know what sprint cars are down here, but. Um, yeah. I told him about eye racing, and matter of fact, he started. He's gonna look it up tonight. I guarantee I've got him hooked. I'm like, you can run you four go. tens from your basement or your living room, <laughs> yeah. and you're okay if you wreck. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's pretty darn realistic. I was amazed at how they were able to just mimic the dirt tracks, you know. And as the you know the the bumper or whatever the buffer or whatever you want to call it shows you how much I know about dirt changes every you know every lap you go around it's like you got it's almost like a whole new line i don't run much dirt but when i do i love running the sprints we'll do that in our off seasons we take most of the summer off and we'll it's like we we shut down for the summer and then the first sunday afternoon that we're not racing somebody's on the discord hey anybody want to run sprint somewhere and before you know it we're racing again just for fun in the summer and the sprints are a blast or just love that just trying to learn it of course i suck at it but it's just so much fun yeah i again getting that c license you know you can yeah. you can run i think it's what is the it may be the 410 i don't really know but uh sure. ran it a couple of times at charlotte yeah. and i hadn't turned a lap in the car and i was driving scared to death i'm like don't hit the race <laughs> car just don't touch me you know and those cars are already yeah. kind of on edge but uh yeah. no i had a blast at charlotte with it yeah. Um, you know, it's just when you hold it wide open, then it's it's all about how little you turn the wheel as as fast as you can go, yeah, or the faster is. you go. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, like I said, I, I really enjoyed uh, the little bit of dirt I've been doing. Uh, John Fowler and the guys brought me out to uh, to try some. I really love that three fifty eight modified, and um, that's been a blast. And then, um, actually, I practiced at. Um, Lernerville, I think it is. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't have walls off in the turn one and two down the back. So I think that's Lernerville. But anyways, I practiced probably got a thousand practice laps in. I didn't realize it was Snowball Derby weekend, and uh, so all that practice for nothing. Um, <laughs> I was at the races and I missed our Thursday event, but uh, been taking it serious and trying to trying to really get this thing figured out. Those guys race pretty hard. Um, mm-hmm. Before we had a dirt league here and at Sim 500, and I never made a feature. So I didn't anticipate doing anything big, and, and I made the first feature. And it was like, even the broadcast group was like, holy hell, Joey made the feature. It was a big deal. <laughs> I guess it sounds like it. Hey, with seven leagues and sounds like a handful of broadcasters, how many admins and such are helping you out? And what's it like during the week? How do you review races that are done? Um, and plan for upcoming weeks and upcoming races? Well, our admin team, uh, I got to give it to them. They, they put up a lot for me, but man, we really have a very simple process. Um, I've tried to, as being an admin, I've seen it done so many different ways. Um, so the one thing that we used to do was the articles. Um, if you were a series admin, you were responsible for a winter picture and the article. And that was just like a job. So we took yeah. that off the table. So oh, so okay. now all our league admin is responsible for that series admin is giving the driver's meeting, maintaining our chat, mm-hmm. and then at the end of the race getting us a uh, winner picture. And mm-hmm. then depending, we'll get the points or they'll get the points. So it's very easy to be an admin at 7500 uh, the way we have it set up right now. But um I, I'll set up all the servers for the week, and, and I'm sure my guys are, you know, their eyes are rolling because I mess up more than I, I do good. <laughs> that sounds but, like me. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. I, you have problems with that, too? Yeah, I, I blame it on um, there's something called dyslexia. I, so I, I bring that up. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with that next time they ask me. I think <laughs> they go. know I've got <laughs> – I got dumb ass of you, I think, at times. <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, you know, they, they keep me honest. Um, yeah. We'll send out – I'll send out a race email most races. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I cover Monday, Tuesday, and um, I'll, su- I'll shoot the email out for Wednesday. But we've got Brian Macklin who covers our Wednesday series for us. Um, he has no idea how to upload points. Um, Brian, if you've done figured <laughs> it out by now, thanks. Um, and we've got uh, Tyler um, – Tyler Dalton, um, Randy Oakham, they do our pictures for us. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Randy actually has redesigned our website. It looks beautiful. I saw that. It looks Um, good. So you can check out sim500.com. I've been begging for banners uh, for our series. He finally got those done for us. Uh, The website looks tremendous. But uh, Steve Herring is a veteran um, leader. Um, He's been a hold of Midnight Thunder for probably five or six years between two different leagues where Midnight Thunder's kind of transition, and he he basically runs the show. Um, and then Saturday is uh, Bobby Wetzel, and, and Tyler helps out with Bobby on Saturdays, and then um, Sundays is our boy Jimmy Coleman. So our admin staff's about eight to ten deep. Okay. Um, they, they listen to me, you know, complain and cry, and <laughs> if our numbers aren't right or this isn't done, and they put up with a lot. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I use this to, to keep my mind going and, to give sure. me something that, um, you know, I'm not a big TV guy. Uh, I like to stay busy. Yep. And that's what Sim 500 does for me. I mean, I work Sim 500, as you know, with your league. I work it every single day. But I've also got it down to where it's very simple now. Mm-hmm. I'm not putting nowhere near the hours in other than we're getting ready for the new year to start. So, right. obviously, we're making a push to get, you know, our final few registration, our drivers registered. I think we have five, four or five openings on Monday night uh, for the NC811 call before you did Cup Series. Um, the Sunday Xfinity Series is doing good. We'll probably have about 60 drivers there. We'll have 55 on Monday. Uh, you will have to qualify your way into that series. So, um, you know, like I said, we get through the first couple of races and then the work kind of slows down. We post up right. our broadcast on our main Facebook page, which is the Sim 500 Esports Racing League. Um, and just span, it's just real simple the way we do it. Sounds like it. How easy was it trans, uh, transitioning from rules to no rules? And what happens if somebody just, you know, some new driver or somebody gets cocky and they start acting like a jerk? How do you handle that? Well, um, the transition really wasn't that bad for us. Um, because at the end of the day, um, our guys have been doing this long enough that they understand, you know, what causes crashes, um, you know, the gas pedal, uh, if you don't lift off of it or you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that really, you know, we, we did an incident point system for so many years. We kept track and it really became pointless because it was never the same person. Ah, So you would sit there and track and track and track and track and think you're fixing a find and a lot of guys have trouble coming into Sim 500 because they, they think somebody's got to be punished if they make a mistake. I'm completely opposite because of the real world of racing, it's going to happen. Exactly. When Buddy Baker told me when I met him, he said, Joey, there's going to be a hell of a lot more downs than there is ups in racing. If you can handle <laughs> the downs, you're going to love the ups. And that's been that's the true. truth. And that's what a lot of guys don't get. That's racing. You're right. Uh, racing is uncontrollable, and you're not going to control it by rules and p- in- incident point systems. Yep. Drivers are not thinking about those things on the racetrack. No, they're not. Um, and you don't want them thinking about that. You want them thinking about what they're doing on the racetrack, not, oh, shit, if I make a mistake, I'm going to get kicked out of the league. You don't want that. You want them focused on the race. And so, for me, I've never been a, pr- a fan of rules. I've never been a fan of, of incident systems because it's just not racing. So the transition wasn't bad. Like I said, our incident no point deal was doing nothing. Yep. Uh, it was costing me a bunch of time tracking drivers. It was never the same people. So, again, it did nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, now where we're at with the racing we have, uh, if you do calls or have problems, you stick out like a sore thumb. Um, it, okay. We don't have in our premier races, we don't have many cautions. Um, yeah. Example, we had 35 uh, cars Monday night, Iowa. In the uh, next gen car, um, we ran 140 laps caution free. Oh, that's um, great. We had tires blowing on cars, um, which the next gen tire fall off is amazing right now. Um, three lanes of racing, um, lap cars, um, 
you know, racing with their heads on leaders, being smart in traffic. And I mean, it was just a great race. Cool. Um, we do that constantly. We actually last year, maybe the year before, we went caution free in three straight races. It was Richmond, Talladega, and I forgot the other track on Monday night. That never happens now, at Talladega. There's not many leagues that do that once a year. <laughs> We did it three straight races yeah. in a row with no caution. Matter of fact, we had just joined Podium Esports uh, right through the pandemic, and um, we put that show on three weeks in a row. So we got the guys. We don't lose many people at the mm -hmm. league, thankfully. Uh, we have had some issues in the past where guys don't agree with certain decisions, but yeah. we try to make it as fair as we can. We're always open to you know, polling drivers and getting opinions. I mean, yeah. I think the more guys we have, you know, putting input into the league, the better we're going to be. So sounds like it. Um, I'm not one of those league owners. It's got to be my way. Um, I always say it's got to. It's it's not about me. It's about the league. When you come to right. me with anything, I don't care what you think. What do you think is best for the league? Uh, you may love to run short tracks or North Wilkesboro, but is that really the best thing for the league? And that's kind of how we kick our conversations off. No, that's great. That's um, kind of the way our league runs. I'm always asking for input. I love doing, like like you said, be the behind the scenes stuff. Um, I've I've done. I did talk radio for six years. I was hanging out at radio stations since I was. 14 years old i'll be 60 next month i did some tv and when i was in uh lawn and garden business i did a lot of public speaking and a lot of teaching i just love the promoting and the organizing of stuff and i don't know a lot about racing other than you get in and you go as fast as you can and you hope you get to the checkered flag before the guy behind you does so when it comes up to certain tracks and cars i've got guys that are know a heck of a lot more about racing than i ever will so it is just kind of like I'm just the leader, and you guys point me in the direction I'm supposed to be going. Um, points. How do you determine winners for uh, your leagues, and how many races is each league for each season? Uh, well, we use the standard. Um, I don't even know what it used to be, uh, Dan and Lisa. Now, what do they call it? Uh, don't even know. I have to go look. The I Sim think, Racer uh, Hub. Sim so Hub. that's that's kind of what we use for everything. Okay. Um, Again, it's kind of hard to go away from it because of the history we have in yep. so many races um, that is a part of that. Um, so we're, we're a part of that. But Mondays, our Cup Series, I believe we're at 35 races this year, 34 races, 32. Mm -hmm. um, we'll run 25 or 26 on Wednesday, and about the same on Sunday uh, with our Premier stuff. And the reason why we're shortening up our Xfinity Series is obviously the NFL – uh, does impact your racing on Sundays, believe oh, yeah. it or not. Yep. So we've gotten smart this year. We're going to kick this thing off. We're going to keep it on fun, fast racetracks. But we'll mix in a little bit of difficulty throughout the season. Um, we're changing up our playoffs uh, just because NASCAR does it. We don't really uh, – doesn't mean we have to do that. So we had some success last year with Wednesday night. We changed the playoff format up, um, so it worked well. But um, – Going back to Sundays, we will finish before the NFL season, or at least around week one, I think is what it is. But yeah. um, when I mentioned the playoffs, um, how we determine our champion on Monday is we'll actually qualify 20 drivers into our playoffs, and then we'll have a five race. They'll all zero out, and we'll have five races. So whoever's in the top 10 will then advance to the final round, and there'll be another five races. Uh, Three-point bonuses for race wins within those rounds. Um, they do not transfer. And then after five races, you'll have a champion. So we, we feel like that um, what we've seen last year with our uh, Trans Service Cup finale, we had four really strong contenders. They'd been great all season long. And mm -hmm. two of them made contact in the race. It knocked one of them out. Oh, no. Two others had issues with other parts of the track or drivers. And you had one guy left. So – for all the work that you put in um, <laughs> and the time you invest, we feel like that we need to give you something a little bit more yeah, um, and kind of more traditional, I guess you would, when mm -hmm. it comes to consistency. So that's how we're going to determine our uh, 811 call before you dig champion this year, and I'm excited about that. I think we've, good. I think we've got a great mix of tracks. Uh, we've got a good mix of off weeks where we try to mimic NASCAR and follow the schedule, but this year we went off the track. We've we're, their schedule is so crazy. I think they're only off on the holidays. 
Uh, we're yeah. off a little bit more than that. We're off. We're going to take a summer break off for two weeks, uh, yeah. June 27th. Uh, through the 4th of July. So that'll be nice for everybody in oh, yeah. the middle, middle of the year to kind of get away from it yep. and come back fresh uh, because there is a lot of pressure on Monday nights. Uh, there's a lot of prizes and stuff. Money like Daytona, for example, is going to pay $100 to the race winner. Cool. Uh, we, we'll, we'll be announcing more uh, payouts uh, for certain tracks throughout the year. But right now, that's the only one we've got locked up so far. But uh Julian will do like the what NASCAR did with a no bull situation. We'll do that and have the payout for for those four premier or, or major events uh, throughout the season. Sounds good. And what else? Oh, you mentioned somebody that helped you out with racing, uh, Norm Benning. Tell me a little bit about him. Oh yeah, uh, you know we've. I've been lucky to hang around some good people and Norm's definitely one of those, um, you know, with the racing, um, uh, the Arca series, we had a deal set up to run, um, Talladega for a, an Arca team and, and the owners, uh, synonymous. We didn't know at the time, a lot of us didn't, but, uh, for taking sponsor money and running. And, uh, he ah, did that to us okay. at Talladega. Yeah. I don't know how it got to Norm bidding, but, uh, I got a call on the phone one day and it was him and, he said, man, why don't you come up here to Gateway? Um, you know, I'll put you in one of my trucks and and we'll uh, we'll let you get a start. And we'll just see where we can go. And obviously, we were hoping we could manage to uh, maintain our sponsorship yeah. and uh, do more in the trucks with Norm. Uh, but we got to go to Gateway. It was uh, it rained like hell that race. I think twice it just poured. Yeah. And I was actually in Norm's uh, Daytona truck. And I think he qualified pretty good with that thing that year. And, um, he came up to me and he said, look, he said, uh, he's, you know, he, I wouldn't pay you to be there. Right. I, I, it was just a gift from Norm to have, to bring me up and, and get the experience. And man, what an experience it was to, to actually get to be a part of a NASCAR event, um, have yeah. your name called and ride in the back of a truck and oh, uh, cool. got a pretty good applause for a little guy from Alabama. Nobody's heard of, I thought that was pretty cool, but there you, go. you know, Norm came to me and he said, Hey, he said, look, the, the grip's gone this racetrack. He's like, would you just take the green, bring it in? Let's think big picture. And I said, Mr. Benning, I said, this is your truck. I'm going to do exactly <laughs> what you say. He says, okay, well, when you park that truck, he says, I want you to come up and help change tires. I said, yes, sir. So I, I did exactly what he told me. I wound up making my first NASCAR start. And also was a pit crew member in the same in the race. Same race. <laughs> I changed front tires for Norm, and then um, oh, wow. uh, that was an experience to do a real NASCAR. And I don't think about that often, but I did. Yeah. A, I've done a couple of NASCAR pit stops. Uh, poor Norm, but um, we went back with him to Iowa. The very next week, so I drove from Alabama all the way to Iowa. Yeah, and um, we were going to do another start there for Norm, but you know it was a situation where we had we could change the numbers around. And I would be locked in. The Norman have to qualify in, which was no big deal because other trucks there, they they weren't going to be able to make it in. But there was a smaller team that, had made, that pulled in there, and and I, I think we both looked at each other and we were just like, this this isn't worth it. They they pulled here, they're going to try to run the race. So I wound up spotting for Norm. So in two races, I was a I started a race, I was a tire <laughs> changer, and I was an NASCAR spotter. So I, I had a hell of a hell of a career yeah, in two in weeks a short of racing. Time. That's um, great. <laughs> but you know, I, I just couldn't keep it up. You know, yeah. it was just too much for us to, yeah. to keep moving. And and then things kind of came back around where the ARCA thing kind of picked back up, and we had mm -hmm. that opportunity there. So you know, like I said, I you know, as much as it I put into it, I think I got everything out of it. I Sounds wasn't like blessed it. enough with the the fortunes. Yeah. To go behind me, but you know, some of the things we did as far as our programs are concerned, uh, suicide. Prevention was a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a family member to suicide. Same here. Um, it messed me up as a child. Um, and that was kind of the racing aspect is what kind of kept me focused and going forward. I made some mistakes along the way as a young man, but still yep. race cars were what drove me to success and where I'm at today. If I didn't have the dream and the love and desire, I don't know where I'd be today, honestly. But uh sure. We worked for the Alabama Foundation for Suicide Prevention. We did some national stuff for the American Foundation Prevention. I, I wrote a blog. Um, I worked with a group called Mission 22, which was centered around our veterans. Uh, 22 uh, deaths a day to suicide with our veterans. 
Wow. So I actually got to the point where I was actually over the state of Alabama for them. We put on multiple events mm -hmm. to raise awareness, uh, raise money for the cause. Uh, so we did a lot of good. It, you know, yeah. the thing for me to obviously making money is one thing, but the platform is even better. Um, even for somebody like myself, when you, you really aren't anybody, but there's a lot of people that care. Yeah. And, and those people that care are listening to you. So true. Um, I wanted to make sure we tried to do something positive with a little bit of time that we had. Yeah. And we, I think we did. Uh, I would have loved to have done more. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it's, it just got harder and harder and harder to find the money to keep up. And then, True. you know, do you really just want to drive around in circles? I mean, as a race car driver, you want to be competitive. You want to go out and race. You want yeah. to, you know, <clears throat> contend for top 20s. I mean, if you realistically can't afford to run for the wins or – have the seat time to race with those guys. Cause I mean, these young guys and, and these other guys, veterans have been racing every day of their life. You can't just walk in racing every other month right. and expect to race uh, up front with them or contend for wins. So that's true. Uh, speaking of truck series, I uh, got to give a shout out to Donnie Leah. Uh, he actually races at Sim 500. So Donnie's a, a, a truck winner. Um, Donnie's a great guy. We've enjoyed having him around. Um, you know, we've had some success with a lot of the, the bigger names. Uh, we mentioned, you know, uh, Parker earlier, but we also have been fortunate enough to do some stuff with Joe Gibbs Racing during the winter. Um, we've put on the Joe Gibbs Winter Challenge uh, three years in a row. Wow. Um, we've had Denny, Hamlin, Christopher Bell, you name it, a lot of the crew members. Um, we've, we've actually uh, had the broadcast on the Joe Gibbs Racing Facebook page. Um, last year they, um, sent, or it was two years ago, they sent a dry, uh, the winter out to Texas with interstate batteries. Interstate was big. They sponsored it, had a big show before the race. We would change vehicles, kind of like an IROC thing. Yep. So, man, I will tell you, as far as racing is concerned, you know, again, I haven't done nowhere near or shown anything close to what I could have done in a, a race car. Look, I'm not dead yet. There's no telling <laughs> if, if the money's right or something happens. We don't yeah. get a chance to go do it again, but true. Um, with sim racing, I mean, it, in iRacing, racing, what they've built and put together as far as a platform, you know, uh, as a kid, you can, you know, if I was a kid that had iRacing, racing, I would have never left the house. You can literally <laughs> exactly, race with your yes. hero every night, whether they're a dirt yeah. racer or yep. NASCAR, or whatever you've got that platform now to, to interact it with. It is them. so much um, fun. It is just the coolest thing. So yeah. again, it's just, it ties into it all. Just very blessed um, yeah. and just having a lot of fun and just Great. love the sport uh, so much. Uh, same here. And if I ever won one of those big $500 million lotteries, I just wondered how long I could run a NASCAR team for. And you're looking at, well, after taxes, you're left with $140 million, maybe five years. I'll stick to iRacing. <laughs> As your financial advisor, I would suggest you not buy a race car and you buy a big ass <laughs> boat and enjoy that. Because you're you going to go. get a lot more enjoyment out of that. And you're going to actually have a resale value. Have so something to sell back. Just yeah. think about that when you win the money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Joey, this has been great. I want to thank you for stopping in tonight and being on the show. And it, it, like you said, it's such a small world. You brought up the name Parker Kligerman. And I'm like, yeah, I know who that is. He owns the racetrack I say that I work at sometimes. So. Um, well, congratulations on uh, doing so much in uh, NASCAR career in about two weeks or two races there. That sounded great, and good luck with your upcoming seasons. And if you don't mind, I'll uh, check in with you every once in a while and see how things are going and invite you back in and talk some more racing. Man, we'd uh, love to do that. And, hey, when the summer comes around and, and y'all shut things down, come over and see us at Sim 500. Uh, we'd love to have you. I think you'd enjoy the atmosphere and just kind of – you know, for me, I wish there was a time that we shut down that I could just go somewhere and be a driver. Um, yeah. But you never know. As much as the behind-the-scenes stuff you love to do, man, there's always a spot to keep you busy during the summer, man. But thanks so much yeah. for uh, having mm -hmm. me on tonight. And, oh, you're more than uh, Everybody out there, th uh, thanks for listening and tuning in. And uh, Sim500.com, again, got to thank Randy Yoka for that great website we have uh, now. But uh, thanks again, and I'll talk you're to welcome. you soon. Okay, take care. Good night. Joey Jatina, Sim 500 Esports Racing League, around since the days of, I guess, console racing, I guess you could call it. Great conversation. Like I said, always a small world, always some connections out there, and that's what that's what's great about the racing world. It's, it's just one big family, and you find out if you 
talk to a few people. Hey, I know that guy. Joey Giacchina from Sim 500 Esports Racing League. You can check him out online, and they said they got a couple spots left open, five or six spots for a couple of their leagues. No rules racing! Sounds like a plan. And I want to let you know that Lugcoin is the crypto coin of Joe Sixpack Racing. And unlike a lot of other leagues where you join and you pay a fee to get in and it's mandatory, this is totally voluntary. It's like a charter system, and when you leave the league, you can sell it back and maybe make a profit. So it's our crypto coin, and it's just something a lot of fun to get people involved to help promote the league. And it's based on the average of three regular crypto coins, and I post the updates twice a day. And right now, we're looking good. A couple weeks ago, the Lug coin wasn't looking that bad. And it's just a way that our league members can help support the league. And again, it's just totally voluntary and just something fun to do because we've got a lot of guys in the league that are into crypto. Another way to support Joe Sixpack Racing is the Joe Sixpack Racing merch shop on Cafe Press. Could use that Arctic Fleece blanket, that 50 by 60 cozy fleece with the Joe Sixpack Racing logo on it. I guess even down there in Alabama last week it was cold. And I think we finally got above freezing today for the first time since uh, early January. And also the Joe Sixpack hoodies are in three of our logos. Joe Sixpack Racing, Cup Series, Truck Series, and also the Joe Sixpack Podcast. About 500 different items you can look up at cafepress.com slash Joe Sixpack Racing League. Five dollars of every purchase goes to support the league. The rest goes to pay Cafe Press and whoever makes the stuff. Coming up this Friday night, February 11th at 8 p.m., Ryan Hatch and Magnus Anderson from the Bitcoin Boys Racing League and Bitcoin Boys Broadcasting. Got some Bitcoin miners. Started their own racing league, and they'll be here to talk about what they have going on on Friday night, live here on Twitch at 8 p.m. And that's about it for this week and this edition of the Joe Sixpack Podcast. Thanks again, Joey Jatina. And if you want to catch this one and share it with your friends, it'll be up on YouTube. And then tomorrow we'll download the audio and then send it out to Spotify, Google Podcast, Amazon Podcast, Apple Podcast, Anchor, and a whole bunch of others. Check out Joe Sixpack Racing online at Joe Sixpack Racing League on Facebook. If you want to get into any of our leagues, it's pretty easy to do. Safety rating of Rookie 2.0 to A4.0. And right now with a I racing max or I rating max of 2,500, we're starting a new series tomorrow night. New test series, the Joe Six Pack Racing Premier Racing Series. And we're doing the 87s at Miami Homestead tomorrow night at 8.30. And you can find that under I racing Leagues on the hosted page. And as usual, thank you for listening, tuning in, and supporting us. And we'll see you on the track. Have yourselves a good night. We'll see you again Friday night.